This video is about all the tools I use for the renovation of this house. They're all super basic, so this might turn into a home renovation tools for dummies guides. I'm dummies too. For a while now I've been receiving requests for a video like this. For anyone who isn't familiar with my project here, I have been renovating this Swedish cabin for two and a half years now without any prior DIY experience. So I am very much a dummy and I still feel like the biggest dummy. This is a log framed house which is about 100 years old. The work I've done includes taking out exterior walls, interior walls, building new walls, putting in new floors and ceiling joists, relocating windows, I put in new tongue and groove ceilings and walls, made an open shelved kitchen, MDF wardrobe and a number of all wood joinery items such as a built in wardrobe, bench with pull out bed and a desk. I also made a tiny insulated shed for my water pump. Let's go inside. I have been building spaces like this and this. Like I said, I don't have any fancy tools and I certainly don't have a fancy workshop, but I have been able to do quite a bit of DIY. So let me take you to the place where I keep all of my tools right now. One day this is going to be my living room, but right now it's a place where I store lots of my timber tools and things that don't have a place. Let's reorganize this so I can actually show you my tools. You know, I think the idea of home renovations or any DIY quickly gets really daunting because you watch these carpenters in the video share their knowledge and their workshop and it's all so professional and so out of reach. It just makes the whole idea of doing any DIY or renovating a space seem like this faraway dream. <laughs> And because I'm not a professional carpenter, I haven't really felt like I know enough about tools to share. But I recently changed my mind. Because my setup is so basic, I feel like it could actually provide an interesting comparison to a more professional approach. And it might show you what you could create if you don't own anything fancy either. And then I guess it's up to you to decide whether that's good enough for you or not. Because you can see the difference. Let's be clear, you can see the difference. Okay, so I'm planning on going through all of my power tools and some of my hand tools and show you how I use them, what I use them for and what maybe a more professional alternative might be if there is one and I'll give you my opinion on my own process and the results I've been able to achieve. Let's get started. So these are my main tools. I have my miter saw attached to this table here, one drill, a circular saw, a reciprocating saw, a jigsaw and a sheet sander. These are my main tools. I actually have two more power tools. This is some sort of impact drill, but I don't use this one. I also have this little multi sander. I also stopped using it, but I will go through all of these. Yeah, these are all the power tools I have. After going through all of these tools, I'm actually also going to share some tips I have when it comes to purchasing them. And I'll let you know which tools I really wish I had, but don't. <laughs> when it comes to hand tools, I have a range of items that I use a lot and I will also go through those in more detail later on. So just so you know, I don't have any prior building experience. When I first bought this cabin, my parents came and they helped for a couple of months to start ripping things out. My dad went to his garage and brought some tools with him. So some of these tools are actually his. My dad also is not a builder so I didn't grow up watching anybody build. Having someone there with me to just quickly demonstrate how to use a power tool was quite reassuring. If you don't have that and I didn't have that with a couple of these tools like this might just saw, I was on my own and I was terrified to use it for the first time but I took my time to go through the instruction manual. Very boring, but I just, I gave myself a day to figure out how this might saw worked to make sure I wouldn't get overwhelmed. Another thing I can definitely advise is to watch the brand YouTube video. Sometimes they make videos on how to use their tools. They're very bland and boring, but 
they're actually really good to show you how their tools actually work. The first tool I bought was this circular saw. It was not the cheapest one, but it was almost the cheapest one. And it took me ages to choose because I had no idea what to look out for and the price range was just huge. I knew I was going to have to buy quite a few tools. So I was looking at the cheaper ones and I ended up buying this one. Another big issue was deciding whether it was going to be corded or cordless. The downside of buying cordless ones is that you need to buy a charger and batteries it adds up to the price. I just, I just didn't know. So I ended up going with a budget one. There's a hardware store in Sweden called Jula, and I think it's their own brand. It's called MEC. So this is the type of tool that you would use to cut some timber to the right length. But I also use it sometimes for cutting it vertically. While I was demolishing, I was even using it to cut through bits of wall that were just too stuck. I use it to notch out sections if you need to create joints. I don't like it, <laughs> this thing. I don't know, I see people on YouTube use circular saws and they just use one hand. They don't even have any ear protection. I have no idea how they do it. They, they clearly do not have this one. It is incredibly heavy. I have to use two hands. I mean, I think you need to do that anyway, so it's circular saws. And it's incredibly loud. I think it honestly took me about two years to not spend a couple of hours to think of an alternative way I could do the job I needed to do without using the circular saw, because that's how much I disliked using it. So while I dislike it, it is a tool that you need. <laughs> Actually, an alternative that I've been thinking about is a smaller circular saw. You get these ones that are sort of handheld. They can't cut that deep, but I don't have to do that very often anyways. And having a smaller circular saw would be really nice to quickly cut something without having to deal with something so loud and heavy. When it comes to cutting lengths, a table saw would be amazing. It's one of the tools that I would like to have, but sort of doubt I will have that anytime soon, because when you really think about it, table saws require so much space, especially when you're cutting things like large sheets. A sheet in metric sizes would be about 2.4 meters long. Just imagine that means that you would need a 2.4 meter table on the one side of your table saw, then the table saw, and then another 2.4 meter table on the other side. So that's, that's six meters of room, of workshop, that you need to devote to use your table saw. So what might be a more realistic alternative is actually a track saw. And a track saw is very similar to a circular saw, but it has a track, like a giant ruler attached to it. The cuts are a lot more precise. It, it has a cleaner cut as well. So you're more likely to use those for say furniture making and these are a bit more rougher for like construction, general construction. And you can simply just do really clean long cuts. So they are a really good alternative to a table saw. And an alternative for this, the downside is that they are very expensive. Okay, let's move on to this reciprocating saw. This is probably, I think this is the second tool that I bought. It's my least favorite tool. Yes, I dislike it more than my circular saw. You get these blades that are really long and whenever you use it, it shakes a lot and it just feels like the cutting is happening so far away from you. It feels like you don't really have good control. But it has been invaluable, especially when it comes to demolishing. Or only when it comes to demolishing. I've only ever used it for demolishing whenever you need to go through a deep space, like a wall. This is, this is it. It also takes metal blades and I have used that to get rid of some really stubborn, like, five inch nails. There are some crazy nails in this house. So I've definitely used it and I definitely don't like using it. And just like the circular saw, this one is corded as well because it just meant a cheaper tool. There are also no alternative. There's nothing really that you could buy for the same purpose. This Magda saw is a budget 
tool is from a Swedish shop or a Scandinavian shop called Biltima. And as I mentioned before, I had to get the courage up to actually use it. But when I first started making cuts, I was amazed <laughs> that I suddenly had straight cuts because up until then I would just been using my circular saw or my little hand saw. Wow! Oh my goodness! And everything was always just a little bit crooked. This thing is is amazing. I do wish that I had more space, but yeah, I mean this is this is just a great a great tool. I cut timber to length, and I sometimes even use it for notching. I'm sure there is a setting where you can actually make sure that the blade only penetrates to a certain depth. I haven't actually used that one, I just kind of drew it by hand. It works really well, the only downside is that it's incredibly, incredibly loud. It's incredibly loud, it's painfully loud. As an alternative, you could use any other saw really, but this just does really simple, clean, straight cuts. And also angled ones, you can... It goes up to 45 degrees. My favorite tool is my jigsaw. Initially I got a jigsaw to cut an opening in my kitchen counter for my kitchen sink. So jigsaws are usually just used for cutting curves but I love it so much and I use it for everything. I also just really take my time. So I love it so much that I, I just use this thing for everything. I even use it for really long vertical cuts. What I should really do actually is start using a ruler with it so they can be even more straight but whenever i'm in a shop i lose the will to buy a roller because they're so so expensive every few months i think you know what i'm really going to invest in a ruler because it's just so useful and every time i finally get to a shop and i look at the prices and i think ah, i just really take my time I hold down the jigsaw really carefully i build down an entire bookcase with lots of long vertical cuts and it works fine. I mean you can see that it's not straight but I think it's good enough. I didn't actually start out with this one. I had another one. I got this one from Built Team again so it was another budget option but for the first time I bought a tool which was cordless so I purchased the batteries and the charger as well so that made it a bit more expensive but I loved having finally having a cordless tool so I didn't have to deal with extension cords and just being in a specific place I felt so free and this one it's just so easy to use. It's a lot less scary, it's less loud, especially if you have a steady hand. I think this is a really good first tool because you can use it for almost anything. If you're willing to take your time, then you know, you can produce straight cuts. But this tool very quickly started to, to move. So it was always cutting at an angle because it's just not very sturdy. And then one day it just died, it just died. This one, I also often use it to cut links, so instead of using this mitre saw just because I'd be outside, it did start cutting things at an angle, and two angles, because this piece, this bottom piece would start moving, but then also it, it would just start moving sideways as I was cutting. It just had some sideways pull, and instead of this one, I got myself this little bush, and it is corded, but I love it. It just immediately was so much more solid. It just doesn't move the way that that tool moves. Also, you can't actually cut at an angle, which I guess is a downside, but it's so simple. So usually when you use a jigsaw, you would actually turn the timber around because it does a clean it cut at the bottom. I actually haven't done that ever since I used this one because it doesn't seem to make much of a difference, which is interesting. I would recommend a little jigsaw to anybody. Steady hand, take your time, and you can do almost any cut you need to do. My drill is probably my most used tool because why well, you just use it for everything? Making pilot holes, putting in screws, I even make pilot holes for nails. You get attachments, round attachments to say make holes for hinges. This is one of the tools that belonged to my dad and he left it here. Same as this impact drill, which 
I don't use. I only use it when this one runs out of batteries and I desperately want to continue work. To be honest, I still can't quite figure out what people would use it for. I can only assume it's for heavier construction use. Maybe brick walls or something or just... I don't know. Because you're so far away from what needs to happen. If I'm putting in a screw or making a hole, I feel like I need to be closer to it. It has significantly more power than this little one, which always amazes me. When I do use it, I'm like, wow. <laughs> I wish my drill did that. So it's a great tool if you have a purpose for it. I clearly don't need it. So this little drill is, I, I don't know where it's from, I think. Well, it's cheap. It's not very good. I often get comments from people telling me about Torx screws. There's a couple of different screw heads, Torx, Phillips, and I think Ortiz or something. And the Torx screw heads are probably the newest, I think. And they kind of ensure that your bits, as you screw things in, doesn't get unstuck. So they just, they just work better. And people often tell me to use Torx screws. The thing is, I use Torx screws. It's just a drill. <laughs> That's not very good. I would love to replace this. Or maybe just add an impact driver to it. An impact driver is like a drill, just that it doesn't do pilot holes, but it's really good at screwing things in. It seems so silly, there's just so many tools for so many things. A lot of times people will have a drill and an impact driver, and the drill will just have the little bit in it to make holes, <laughs> and then the impact driver will have the bit in it to screw it in. I have to constantly switch bits. So it would be amazing to have an impact driver. And also just for something a little bit more powerful and easy to use that doesn't rattle all the time. But I I love it. <laughs> it works. It's it even a cheap one does a good job. My last power tools are these two sanders. So this I believe is called a sheet sander. And this is a multi-sander. I stopped using this multi-sander. It is very good to get into little corners because it's got this pointy end, but it also leaves a lot of circular marks. Even though this seemed to sand a little bit better, it was a little bit more intense because of the marks, I stopped using it. So now I just use this sheet sander for everything. But I do sometimes wish that I had something that made a little bit more impact, especially since I use a lot of on the planed wood, so quite rough wood, construction timber, which I use for furniture pieces. The wood needs to be sanded before I stain it. So a belt sander is really good for that. It takes away a lot of wood, so it's really good for rough wood. And also stripping finishes. Another option would be an orbital sander. They are round. I've never used them, so I don't know how they would compare to a sheet sander but they seem to be the most popular type of sanders that people own. This works, it gets tiring to use, but I bet every sander gets tiring to use because it's just the same movement over and over again. So these are all of my power tools. And like I said, I use this room quite a bit for cutting wood, but I actually usually go outside where I built myself a little workbench. <laughs> So this is the workbench I made after my first year here and it changed everything. Okay, that's very dramatic, but <laughs> having this made such a difference. Just having a space where you can cut wood is very useful and it's not very big. It doesn't take huge sheets or anything. So when I do cut sheets, say sheets of OSB, I tend to do it standing up <laughs> nowadays. This was one of the most usable pieces that I made. I purposely made it with these openings in between the planks so that I would be able to use my circular saw and the other saw to cut long vertical lengths in between. And even though that means that sometimes I do lose tools, <laughs> they keep dropping to the bottom, it's very useful to have these openings. So I'm very happy that I made it that way.
Let's have a look at some hand tools. box of all the hand tools that I use most often so let's go through those quickly um, let's go somewhere a little bit nicer hand tools let's talk about a couple of these oh some safety equipment gloves when it comes to demolishing a couple of items that are very useful are crowbars I have a couple of different ones of these plier this plier was so expensive and i didn't want to buy it but it's been really useful to take out old nails yeah mainly old nails but it's it's really good it's actually a lot more useful than you think it might be and things like a hammer when it comes to general construction this level just to make sure that everything is level <laughs> horizontally and also vertically is is really important i have this big one and the smaller one tape measure a stapler is actually another tool that i got a while ago it's quite useful when you need to attach membranes i use it for my greenhouse i used it for moisture barriers things like that when it comes to woodworking my absolute favorite tool used to be this tiny saw I used it for everything. I actually really like cutting things by hand. It makes me feel more involved in the process. Like it turns it into an art or like a meditation as opposed to just building something. To be really honest, I can't for the life of me use a normal sized saw, like one of those regular ones. I just, I can't, <laughs> I can't get it to work. I just, the teeth just get stuck. It's ridiculous. I can't. So I got this one and used it for everything because it's so good. So I love this, but recently upgraded to this Japanese saw, which is absolutely amazing. This was one of the best investments that I've made. It has two different teeth on both sides. One is to go with the grain and one is to go against the grain which I don't want to say it's life-changing, but it's just really, it's incredibly useful when you're doing joinery work. And I'm really happy I have these. There's a couple of different types of Japanese saws. Maybe one day I will own all of them. But this is a lot more precise. The blade is thinner as well. You can do pretty good straight cuts as opposed to, you know, this one or just a bigger saw, which is, I think, just a little bit more for construction and this is more for woodworking. I can absolutely recommend Japanese saws. They're probably all of them are very good. I have a couple of clamps, which you always need to just, when you work with the wood, clamp it down so it doesn't move. I have a few different rulers, but they're all small. I think I need a really big one, which would be nice now and again. And more rulers. They're all the same. Rulers are very expensive, by the way. All of the fancy ones that I would like to get, really expensive. And I keep just going to the shops and looking at them and thinking I should really buy them and then I don't because they're so expensive. Stanley knife. It's more useful than I thought it would be. Chisels are really useful for woodworking. When you're doing joinery, notching out, then chisels are really good. I feel like I need to sharpen them because they do quickly go dull. And that's kind of it. I have a range of 
screwy, hand screwy things. I have this, which is quite useful now and again. I don't know how to call it. <laughs> sort of to sand things down a bit, but in a tool as opposed to sanding paper. Actually, why don't we draw a comparison between a circular saw, jigsaw and Japanese saw with regards to cutting long lengths. For example, this bookcase was cut pretty much exclusively with my jigsaw. All of these long vertical lengths were done with the jigsaw and you can see that it's not as straight as you know you ideally would like it to be also sanding wise it is it's still a bit rough but depending on your expectations it might just be good enough i am pretty happy with this but to someone else this might just not be up to a level that they would be happy with something that i cut with a circular saw would be these plywood doors I always make sure that the factory edge is on the side of the door handle, so that's the straighter side which you see, and then the other sides are cut with the circular saw. I'm actually quite surprised at how straight these are. It could have been a lot worse because the circular saw definitely does a bit of a wave. The first plywood doors which I cut with the circular saw were definitely a little bit wonkier. <laughs> They are in the kitchen and the boot room. I also cut all the really thick counters with the circular saw, such as the desk and the kitchen counter. And again, those cuts are also just a little bit imperfect. And then towards the end of making this banquette seat, I was enjoying using the Japanese saw for the joinery pieces so much that I also ended up using it for this ply front for the drawers. And even though it takes a little bit longer to cut it as opposed to the circular saw, it's much more of a calm experience. <laughs> it's much more enjoyable to use the Japanese saw. It's, but again, it doesn't do a perfect straight cut because obviously you're cutting by hand. But I think the result is something that I am happy with. And actually, because you take your time, you don't have a machine that just keeps going. It's easy to not make any mistakes and go off into like a sideways wobble, but it does take some concentration. Let's talk about the tools I would love to have. I'm just sitting here and realizing that I don't actually have as many tools as I thought I did. This isn't that much. Maybe, maybe I should finally get the tools that I've been wanting to have because they would definitely make my life a lot easier. The tool at the very top of my list would be a nail gun. I would benefit from a nail gun so much. I have all of this wood which I fix to the walls. It's just, it's all just wood that basically just requires a nail gun to fix it. And instead of that, I make little pilot holes with my drill and then hammer in nails or I screw it in when a nail gun would just get through that so much faster. Unfortunately, nail guns are insanely expensive. I actually bought one. I finally found a cheap one, took it home, and I just couldn't make it work. And I was going through the instruction manual and it just wasn't clear. Turns out it was cheap because it was a type of nail gun that requires a compressor. I have no intention of buying a huge compressor just for a nail gun. Um, so yeah, I took it back. No nail gun, but that is definitely on the top of my list. As mentioned before, an impact driver would really save time changing bits just to be able to drive in those screws faster and more efficient. So an impact driver is definitely something that I'm looking at. To cut all of my vertical, long vertical lengths, I was always thinking about something like a table saw, but I simply just don't have the space for that. So that's not a realistic thing to want, even though it would be an amazing tool. I have been thinking about either just at least getting a good ruler so I can, 
I know I can use pieces of wood, but I just don't really trust my wood to not be warped. That's one option. That's probably the cheapest option to get a slightly better result. It's not wobbly to make cuts that are not too wobbly. But really, I think probably the best option for me to be would be a track saw. Again, they are expensive, like nail guns, but I think that's probably the best tool that I could get for this purpose. I feel like I would love to have a better sander. If I had the opportunity to work with really rough wood, or say reclaimed wood that really needed a lot of sander, I would definitely invest in a belt sander to do a proper job. Another thing, slightly different, but having a good shop vacuum would be so useful. I'm always just using this. I hate leaving dust and just dirt. You know, when you create a framework and then in between the framework you end up with dust and sawdust and then you build around it and basically you've built in dirt forever. I mean, I don't even have a vacuum for the house. I have one of those handheld ones. It's uh, got the cheapest one. It's not very good. There's a couple of other things that I'm always looking at when it comes to more detailed woodworking such as a router. Having a router would be amazing. I would love to at one point make windows and doors and then being able to routing out corner details obviously adds to the custom detailing of it. Things like a pocket hole jig would be really useful to create built-in furniture. What I don't like about pocket jigs is that you always have to buy the very specific screws that come with the brand. They're often quite expensive. I don't know. They would be very useful. I feel like that's a future thing if I have more money to make furniture the way that you kind of should be making it. You know, when you make all the plywood boxes, the perfect plywood boxes, and like slide them into place. I don't really make my built-in furniture that way. I create a framework which I attach to floor, wall, ceiling, and then I attach things to it because, mostly because it saves on materials. Another thing I would love to have is a bench vise. Not a power tool. A bench vise is one of those, it's usually metal devices that you fix to your work table. And it basically just holds wood. You can hold wood upright. So rather than clamping it down horizontally, you can clamp it down vertically. And that is really quite useful sometimes when you just need a good grip on something or just need to cut it from a different angle. So bench vise would be amazing, but that also requires another workbench that can take that bench vise, which I don't currently have. But these are items that I'm all thinking about. In the back of my head, I actually really love the idea of just making things with hand tools, even like, you know, when I think about one day making a building, old Japanese or Korean techniques, and just using hand tools is something that I feel very attracted to. I don't think I won't necessarily do that because, I don't know, I'm just thinking time and also just the time it takes to research and learn these things. But who knows? I um, I do really love hand tools and I'd love to get more into smaller woodworking projects and making furniture and doing it by hand. Okay, when I first bought tools, I was so completely overwhelmed with all of the options. I think I might have a couple of tips for those of you who might be looking at buying tools that might help you to narrow down your your options really. The first question to ask yourself is where will you be using your tools? Are you going to have a dedicated workshop, garage, just any room in which you have power sockets or are you going to be moving around like me doing things on one side of your land, other side of your land, throughout the house. Because this is going to inform your decision whether you should go for cordless or corded power tools. Of course, things like drills and impact drivers should always be cordless. If you know that you're really only going to be in a workshop, then having corded tools is the cheapest solution. And then you can just buy from whichever brand you want to buy them from. Power tool brands tend to have a huge range of tools, but when you really start researching them, you realize that one brand is really good for, say, they have a really good jigsaw, but their mitosaw might not be that 
as good and another brand might have a really good mighty saw so you can end up purchasing just the best tool from whichever brand you can afford. If you go for cordless tools, however, that means that you need to buy the batteries and the chargers for each individual tool and they get really expensive. Essentially, quarter tools are a lot cheaper, but if you decide that cordless is better for your situation, I would advise you to buy into a system. This is something I really wish that I realized and had done because I now have so many quarter tools and the cords get in the way. I always have to run extension leads all over the place and I can't just take a tool to somewhere outside and use it. The upside with quarter tools is that they do tend to be more powerful but obviously the downside is that you can't take them with you or you need to run an extension cord which I do and I get used to it you know nowadays because I have the workbench outside I just run the extension cords to the workbench but it's also it remains annoying that I can't just take the tool to somewhere else on the plot which when I had a jigsaw which I could bring with me I really enjoyed being able to have that freedom. I really wish that I had bought into a system. I wish I'd chosen a brand so that I could afford and got the battery packs and the chargers and then just stuck with it. Obviously the tricky thing is you need to decide how much money you have to spend. So watch your budget and look at the brands that are within your budgets. I would try and go for a brand which is, if you're on a budget, a step up from that you know don't go for Hikoku or Makita but go for like Bosch Bosch the green Bosch which is their DIY version because I sort of regret buying the cheapest of the cheapest they are heavy big and louder often than the slightly more expensive or the very expensive brands I actually really like this Bosch, this Bosch green line. I have a few of their products now and I was thinking of buying into Bosch green line, but the tricky thing is that they don't have nail guns. So that's another thing when you decide to buy into a system, think about the tools that you know that you're going to need and pick a brand that has all of them if possible. Like I said, I was thinking about buying into Bosch Green and replacing or adding to these items. But because they don't have a nail gun, I was thinking about Bosch Professional or Makita, but they get very expensive. But one of the reasons for me choosing, thinking about Makita is because they're a lot lighter. Now, this is actually another tip. If possible, go to a shop and holds the tools because weight and size is actually quite important when you use the tool for example with this circular saw it's just too heavy too big for me and that's one of the main reasons why i don't like using it so especially if you have say small hands or you yourself are not physically insanely strong keep that in mind and make sure that the tools you have suit your size, your weight, your strength. And that's actually one of the reasons why I was looking into Makita, even though they're really expensive. It's a Japanese brand and their tools are generally smaller and lighter weight, but it also gets very confusing because then they have cheaper options to all of their products and obviously they're not going to be as lightweight as the more expensive ones. I don't know. I'm just, I have to tell you honestly, I'm still very confused. This is one of the reasons why I haven't bought any new tools. You know, after two and a half years, I still can't decide which brand I want to buy into. So Makita is one I was interested in, maybe Bosch Professional. I just don't know. And I feel like I just need to pick and I'm never going to be able to actually make a decision. But you should, you should try, try and make a decision. I think this is what I'm able to share with you. I don't know if that was interesting or enough, but yeah, I hope that was something. <laughs> I think the comment section might actually become quite interesting. I bet some people who have more experience or just a different experience might 
share their knowledge about their tools and brands and that might become a really interesting resource for for people to read so good luck on your own journey to buying tools i hope your journey will be less confusing than mine all right toodles